Hi Stampers, this is Lisa. I am having one heck of a Monday. I hope you can see me this time. I've been trying to record this. I went all the way through my entire spiel and it was a black screen. Tried it again, still didn't work. So I'm trying this one more time. Hopefully this time you can see me. Oh, I think it's working. <laughs> if anybody's out there, if you can let me know you can see me, that would be great. Um, I want to thank you for coming in to join me today. I've been trying to try something new. It's just popping in here on F Facebook to do a Facebook Live. Um, I'm just kind of picking things out of the air. So if there's something that you would like to see or um, a stamp set you're having issues with, something you want me to show you how to do, um, let me know. That's what this is here for. Um, today we're just going to play around with watercoloring, um, a couple different techniques, and then we're going to make a card. I've got this really cute little mermaid card. I'm trying to figure out the way to go. Um, so we're going to make this card today and just um, play around with some techniques. So let me switch up the camera so you can see my desk. <laughs> Here's our card. <laughs> Thank you for hanging in there with me. And I apologize, technology is just definitely a Monday today. Um, anyway, this is the card we're going to make. Um, and this is another watercolor technique I'm going to show you. Um, there's a couple different things we can watercolor with. Um, and this one's done with our stamp and Write markers. And this I just wanted to show you because someone else um, recently did a... Um, Facebook Live and they were playing around with flare markers and adding a little bit of water on some watercolor paper and they said oh yeah any watercolor um, any water based um, markers will work and I thought hey our stamp and write markers they're water based so let's try those and actually they worked really well um, they did not work so well on the shimmery white papers you can see that left some definite lines here not what I wanted um, but when I did it on the watercolor paper, it blended really nicely. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, the Stampin' Write markers I have here are Pumpkin Pie, Mango Melody, and Crushed Curry. And I've just used some post-it notes, and I've um, kind of made a sun um, out of a circle. I've masked it off. Um, so that's going to stay white for me while we color. And then this is just going to make it so that we can create the skyline up here and have the land down here. All I did was I took the marker and the brush end and I just kind of laid down some color. I just kind of scribbled a little bit. And then I came back in with another color to kind of do my gradient. And then I came in with the final color to do the background. And it looks awful right now, but the basic idea is we're just adding color to the paper. And then I'm going to bring in the um, aqua painter and we're going to add some water to it. Um, you could also do it with our stamp and spritzer as well. You know, if you wanted to just start off that way, we can do that. And you can see as soon as water touches it, it starts to blur a little bit. And then you can just kind of bring in your brush, your finger anything just kind of spread around the color and you get a really pretty effect so anyway I was very excited when I figured out this worked because we always like to have um, multiple uses for our tools I mean we spend a lot of money buying all these craft supplies it's great when we can find another use for them um, and get more bang for our buck so um, that's just kind of how that worked um, after it was done I peeled off this and I came back in with the dark marker again and colored in the sun you know ideally you might want to wait till everything's dry but I'm just trying to give you guys an idea here of how this works um, but you just kind of get it wet and let it bleed around on the paper and that come out pretty so I thought that was a really cool technique and I just wanted to share it with you. Um, today we're going to be working with the, the Magical Mermaid stamp set. And that's this one right here. Um, it's a really pretty set and um, obviously it makes a great card. So we're going to make this one today. Um, it started out with a basic watercolor background. 
Um, and we used to be able to take our stamp pads and, you know, squeeze them and pick up some um, ink off of the lid. Um, yeah, isn't that cool? I didn't know it would work either, but very cool. Um, and then I'm going to use the... This is just a palette. I picked this up at probably the dollar store. I'm sure they sell them at Michael's in the kids department. It's just a little well. And then I'm going to use our reinkers. And our reinkers are fabulous because there's so many uses for them. I mean, we've done the shaving cream technique. Um, we've done, we've reinked our pads. We've reinked our markers. You know, reinking the markers is really simple. All you do is you take your marker and a pair of tweezers, and you want to pull out this this end. It comes out really easily doesn't damage it at all. Then you would take your um, reinker and you would drop a color, a couple drops of the same color into it, and then insert this back in. And then you would just put the lid back on and roll it around on the table. Um, and then just store it that way for, I don't know, 12 hours overnight maybe, um, just so that the ink distributes to both ends. Um, because there is the thin end on one side and the thick end on the other, and you want to make sure both of them are nice and moist. That's also why we store them on their sides, um, so both ends stay moist. But anyway, today we're going to be watercoloring with them, and so I'm going to take just one drop. This ink goes a very long way, um, so you don't want to get carried away. Oops. And there I go, getting carried away. And then I'm going to take the aqua painter and I'm just going to add some water to it. And how much water you add depends on how dark you want the color to be. You know, the, the, the lighter you want it, the more water. And this one's really dark because I did two drops. I didn't mean to do that. Um, so I'm going to add lots of water. And then we're going to come in and we're just going to smear it around on the bottom. And I'm just kind of laying it down, swiping side to side. Um, you can always add more if you want. And then when I'm done with the crumb cake, I'm just going to wipe it off till it's clear. Then I'm going to come over here and pick up the pool party. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to swipe back and forth. And again, because this is watercolor paper, it's just blending beautifully. And that's all there is to it. And that create a pretty background. And then after we've done this, there's one I did earlier. It's actually a little darker. But, um, so then we would bring in our stamp set. And we've got this great little um, sand and seashells stamp that's going to go on over the top of the bottom. And I'm just going to use the same color. I'm going to use crumb cake. Gentle tap, tap, tap on here. Um, we don't want to press too hard because you get that little extra ink on the end. We don't want that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I did it. <laughs> Got it on there without catching the edge. So that just added some really pretty little seashells and makes it look like um, sand. And then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to mask the bottom. Look here, it's some regular paper. And then I'm going to take the seaweed and I'm just going to ink this up in um, pear pizzazz. And I'm masking because I want the seaweed to be able to be in different heights. And this allows me to stamp at various heights and have it coming out of the background a little more natural looking. Then we're gonna come in and stamp the mermaid. And grab some paper here. And I'm gonna do this in a no line watercolor technique. And what that means is I'm gonna use um, Sahara sand which I had on my desk a second ago. And now don't see. 
Okay, let's pick a different color. You want any light color because all you want it to do is keep, oh, that's why I can't find it right under my nose. Don't you love that? Signs I'm getting old for sure. Anyway, <laughs> back to what we were doing. I'm gonna take the um, mermaid and I'm gonna ink it up with Sahara sand. And I'm using Sahara sand, you could use so saffron, you know, anything that's really light. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna ink her up, we're gonna stamp on some scrap paper, and then we're gonna come back and stamp onto the cardstock. And it gives a really faint look. As you can see from far away, you can barely see it. Um, and that's what we want because we really want the water coloring to stand out and not the stamping on this one. So then I'm going to bring in our watercolor pencils. And this is the first set that we did. Um, it's got I think, 10 different colors and oh, 13 different colors. We got a bunch in here, um, but they just added a second set um, that's only available during August. And so if you really like watercolor pencils and you think this is a cool idea, you might want to get more. Um, and they're only available in August, they're telling us. So you might want to jump on that. Um, and I'm just going to take the, the um, this one's Bermuda Bay, and I'm going to go ahead and just add some to her tail here and again I'm not being really exact because I'm just kind of laying down color and then I'm going to come back in with our blender pen and I'm using blender pen this time because I'm coloring on whisper white and the aqua painter might be a little too heavy handed might lay down a little bit too much water and cause the paper to pill and we wouldn't want that so um Here's my blender pen. Again, these are available in our Stampin' Up! catalog. And you see if I just come in really lightly, and I just, it gives it just the slightest amount of moisture, which wets the watercolor pencil and allows it to blend. And they are specifically designed to do this, so you couldn't really do this with your standard um, water, or your standard Crayola pencils. You would want something that specifically said it was watercolor and that allows you to add this moisture and spread it around. And I like it because then you don't get the little lines that you get when you normally color with pencils. So you would just come along and you would color her in. And then you just clean it off. I mean, and you just wipe it on your surface and that's all there is to it. As soon as it runs clear, you're ready to work with the next color. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add just a little bit of pink because I'm going to color her arms and her body. And I, I don't want them hot pink. I mean, and that's what this is. But I don't have a skin tone in that set. So I'm using the hot pink and then I'm going back in with my blender pen and just coloring it, you know, taking that pink and spreading it a little thin. And so as I take and I spread that around, you can see that it gives it just a little bit of color, you know, not too much. So it is skin toned, and then let's make her a blonde. And again, just laying down some color. I'll come back in and um, blend it around with our blender pen. And then um, I wanted to do the little hair thing she has in the Bermuda Bay, but I wanted a little bit darker. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in um, my palette again. I'm going to add some water, just plain old water, um, to one of them. And then I'm going to dip the end of my pencil into the water. And it just makes the color a little more intense. So when I come in here and paint with it when it's wet, I get a much darker color. You can see how we can add some accents down to her tail. Um, 
um, and it's much darker when it's wet. You know, and if again it doesn't give you the right look that you want, you can come back in and blend it some more. And I'm not being too careful about staying in the lines because I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut her. I like her popped up a little bit. And so I'm going to come back in and fussy cut her out. And I know that, you know, we wish there was a framelit that goes with it because that's so easy when we can just pop it into the big shot and cut her out. But this one doesn't. So I'm just going to take my paper snips, which are some small, very sharp scissors, and I'm going to just cut around the outside of her body. And you'll find that as you're trimming, rather than trim your scissors to match your paper, kind of spin the paper to match the scissors. Because we cut best kind of straight ahead with our grip. But if we bend the, the paper and let the scissors follow along, I find it much easier. That was a trick somebody taught me when back in my early scrapbooking days. Um, when we used to cut out people out of pictures and create silhouettes. And then with her hair, I'm just going to go ahead and crop a little wide for now. And then I'm going to come back in and again get close to her head. And I'll show you why I did her hair that way. I'm not going to leave it that way. But there's so much detail there and it's so small, I just really didn't feel that I could get in there and um, do her hair justice. So what I'm going to do is come back in and I'm going to cut little, like, I don't know, wedges, triangles, I don't know what you want to call it, but I'm going to come in from both sides. I'm going to come in from um, the top at an angle and I'm going to come in from the bottom at an angle and then pop out that extra piece. So again, from the bottom and from the top, and from the bottom from the top and just go along and cut little wedges and that gives me the wispy end to her hair that she's you know intended to have and again I would probably pay a little better attention to this if I wasn't um, trying to speed things along for the sake of filming because I know your time is valuable and I appreciate that you stopped by to take a look at my video. Um, if you're watching it live, I can see some comments. Um, I appreciate that a lot. If you're um, watching this on a replay, um, you can go ahead and hit replay or type replay in the comments just so I know you were here. I appreciate you. And then I'm going to take the Wink of Stella and I'm going to um, color her right over the top. And what this does is the Wink of Stella just adds a little bit of shimmer to it. It's not quite glitter. I mean, it's glittery, but it's very fine and it's very light. It's not the same as um, putting down Dazzling Diamonds. Um, that would be much more glitter. This just kind of gives you a hint. Um, and another thing you could do is you could um, dip the Wink of Stella into the reinkers as well and color with that. It makes a, you know, just a, an aqua painter with shimmer to it. Very cool. So now that I've got her popped up, I have my background with my seaweed. I have a pool party card base. And I'm just gonna go ahead. This is watercolor paper again, which is a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna add more adhesive than I normally would because watercolor paper, when you get it wet, it kind of it warps a little bit. Not too bad, but, um, and one of the ways you can avoid that is you add a little bit of moisture to the back and then color the front with your water because that makes the distribution of water more even and it allows it to, um, let me get, it warps because it swells and if it swells evenly on both sides, you don't get as much warp. Does that make sense? Anyway, so then we're going to take this and we're going to add it to the front of the card. And then I'm going to use our Stampin' Dimensionals. And we have those in two sizes. We have our standard size and then we also have our minis. I've got our minis here today. It used to be that we used the one size all the time and if we needed smaller ones we just cut them down. But I'm so happy that now they just have this size that we can just add a few more. And they, we don't have to cut them at all, they just fit. 
So I just kind of tried to evenly distribute them on the back. Does anybody else have these little things all over their house? <laughs> they kind of have a little bit of static cling to them and they stick to me and my husband goes, what's this? A little leftover craft fun. So anyway, I'm just gonna stick her over the top and have her floating. And then I can bring in the sentiments and I've got um, have a magical birthday and I have mermaid kisses and starfish wishes. Um, let's see, I can stamp that in pool party. Let's see, I think I have room out here. A little bit. Um, so I put have a magical birthday on the outside. For the inside, I'm going to just take a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And then I'm going to come back in with a pair of pizzazz, and we're going to stamp some more seaweed. This I'm just going to leave it kind of hang off the edge. Again, I'm getting various heights just by letting it hang off the edge. And then I'm going to come in with the inside phrase, mermaid kisses and starf starfish wishes. <laughs> yeah. They are, they're staticky, they go everywhere. But it's fun, isn't it? So there's the inside. Ideally that would be a little straighter, but again, this thing makes me nervous. And uh, like I said, I'm trying to be mindful of your time. So for this one, I only add adhesive in the corners because it doesn't require as much and it makes my adhesive go a little further. So we'll just set that on the inside. And there we go. There's our card. So we can do it, like I said, with the outside sentiment or without. I've got both ones here. Um, if you get a little bit of a look, you can see that that's got the shimmer to it. This is our no line watercolor. It's a much lighter version. This is stamped in the memento and then colored in. So it's a very different look. This one's much softer. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, if you're here live, thank you. Deborah. I can see your comments. It's fabulous. I'm so glad it's working. Um, and I apologize that it took a while for things to pop on. But anyway, I thank you for coming in today. I hope you enjoyed our cards. Um, if you um, have any techniques that you want to learn, if there's something that, you know, a stamp set that you've gotten that you don't know what to do with it or a framelit that you're having issues with, you want to make the... the um, barn door slide the way it's supposed to and you can't quite figure it out, um, just let me know. I'm here for you. Um, and if there's something you want me to demonstrate, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, if you give me um, ideas, just that much better that I can um, do something that you're actually interested in. Oh, gosh. I wish I could make this thing work. I, I promise I'm going to work on it. <laughs> It's a Monday. Maybe that's just why everything's all fouled up. Um, hopefully um, my next one comes out a little smoother. Um, you can also find me on YouTube. Those ones I'm able to edit. So all my little goofs go away. Um, so make sure to pop over to my YouTube channel at Queen Bee Creations. Um, from my queenbeecreations.net, you can um, click the link on top. It'll take you there. And again, um, I thank you for visiting with me today. And I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. Bye.